Bone Dry Dunes is one of the more difficult tracks in the game to time trial, even if you're not going for world record strategies. There are two different sandy sections in the track, both of which are pretty consistent run killers, although for very different reasons as we'll get into in a minute. That being said, its difficulty is what makes it so fun to play, because if you get good at this course, it'll put you way ahead of the competition. Welcome to part 14 of Basic Training, where we're going to cover everything you need to know about Bone Dry Dunes on 150cc. As always, we're going to cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. This is one of the few courses in the game where there's really not much room to create an easier version of the run, so I'm going to break this tutorial down into two parts. The first part will cover the strategies that I use in my current PB, and then part two will cover the world record strategies. If you're finding these tutorials useful, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like and a comment, since this not only lets me know that you're enjoying the content, but it also lets YouTube know to recommend these videos to other racers who might also be looking for tips and tricks on how to improve. I release a new video every week, so hit that subscribe button and the notification bell beside it so that you can stay up to date with my latest content. And with all that out of the way, allow me to quench your thirst for the time trial strategies of Bone Dry Dunes. The recommended build for this course is going to be Waluigi, Wiggler, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. We've seen this build plenty of times already, so there's not really a lot of explanation needed, but what I will say is that this was the old world record build, and it's a hell of a lot easier to use in the current world record build, which is Baby Daisy, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Cloud Glider. Cloud Glider has the same stats as Paper Glider, but Baby Daisy and Bitty Buggy both have the highest mini turbo stat in the game. The thing is, in order to use this build effectively, you're going to have to do some straight up bonkers mini turbo strategies to save time. But that's enough of the builds, let's check out the track. At the start of the run, we're going to turn slightly to the right before the race starts so that you can get over to the right hand side of the track as quickly as possible. Then we're going to build up a super mini turbo around the first turn. Now this is a bit counterintuitive, but even though you actually have space to build up a mini turbo around the second turn, you actually don't want to do that because it's going to mess up your line around the next turn. So after releasing the super mini turbo, just go straight and then a little bit before the next turn, start a right drift and immediately start holding left to widen your drift angle so that you can grab the two coins here. After you release your mini turbo, you want to do a left hop followed by a left drift and then for the next turn we basically want to do the same thing but to the right. You don't absolutely need to do the double hops for these two turns, but it basically helps you get a better line by keeping your turns as tight as possible. Now the next 9 or so seconds of this track are going to kill pretty much all of your runs, so we're going to break down each piece in excruciating detail. After building up the super mini turbo, we're going to release and then immediately start a left drift. Release the mini turbo as soon as you get it and try to angle yourself in such a way that you grab the third coin from the right hand side of the ramp here. After tricking off the ramp, keep holding down the drift button and right on the joystick so that when you land you'll immediately start drifting. This first dune that we're coming up to can actually be a bit problematic because going off of it in the wrong way will cause you to get airtime. If this happens, then when you land you're almost guaranteed to get flung into the wall in front of you. And as if running face first into a wall wasn't bad enough, there's actually a little bit of off-road in front of the wall, and if you're drifting into it, then there's a really high likelihood that you actually get shot into the gap on the right hand side of the track. Once you know this though, it's not really super hard to navigate. Basically what you need to do is when drifting over this dune, you just want to drift in such a way that you're not going straight up the dune, but rather slightly off to the left hand side of it. After passing this dune, we're safe to start holding a harder right drift angle, which will allow us to both take the turn more tightly as well as help us build a super mini turbo more quickly. And trust me when I say that we want to build up this super mini turbo as quickly as possible. The reason is because the upcoming line that we need to take is a colossal pain in the ass. Basically what we're going to want to do is release the super mini turbo and then take the inside line and build up another mini turbo so that we can go on the bridge section to the right. Making the turn in and of itself isn't really that bad. In fact, if you made it past the previous sand dune without any hassle, then the turn itself is more or less free. It's the coins that make this, well, really this whole track so awful. The strategy goes like this. After releasing the mini turbo, we're going to start a right drift and then immediately start holding left on the joystick. This will cause you to move straight up the path, but your cart will actually be moving diagonally. When you start this drift, you want to be positioned in such a way that the coins are slightly off to your left, so that as you move through the path, you'll grab all three coins. I actually mess it up here a bit, but honestly if you only miss one coin, it's not really the end of the world. 
The reason that we want to take the turn in this way is that after we grab the last coin, we're going to start holding a hard right on the joystick to get onto the bridge section. But notice the shape of this little sand dune here. If you hit this turn at too wide of an angle, this dune will act like a little ramp and it's going to make you swing out over to the far left hand side of the track. You'll actually see this a little bit in lap 3 of my PB run. If you hit the turn poorly enough, you can even get thrown into the wall on the left hand side of the bridge. So let's recap here. After grabbing the third coin from the right hand side of the ramp, we're going to drift around the middle slash left hand side of the first sand dune and build up a super mini turbo. Release as soon as you get it and then just before getting to the first coin on the inside path, start a right drift and immediately hold left to widen your drift angle. As soon as you grab the third coin, start holding a hard right on the joystick to build up a super mini turbo onto the bridge. Grab the two coins and we can finally move on to the next part of the track. Now after you grab the two coins on the bridge, the rest of the lap is generally pretty straightforward. You want to hit the two spinning boost turn styles, trick off the first ramp and grab the middle coin. Once you get to the second ramp, you want to get to the left hand side of the track, but angle yourself just slightly to the right. The reason is that once we trick off the ramp, we want to land in a left drift and hold a hard left on the joystick to build up a mini turbo before tricking off the glider ramp. Once you trick, start holding down and right on the joystick so that you can make it back onto the track on the other side of the gap. Okay, so there's kind of a lot going on here, so let me actually break it down in detail. As far as I can tell, building up the mini turbo here serves three purposes. First, mini turbos are just good, but that probably goes without saying. Second, building up the mini turbo allows you to do some glider vectoring with that down and right angle on the joystick. The third reason is that you might notice that we're facing slightly into the ground when we do this. This in and of itself is actually pretty useful because the track on the other side of the gap is a lot lower than the glider ramp, and so this strat actually lets you get down to that part of the track as quickly as possible. Which is nice because we want to actually start a left drift as soon as we can so that we can navigate this super tight left turn that shows up right after we get onto the track. After building up the super mini turbo, we want to wait until just before this little mini sand dune up here when the track starts going up so that we can start our left drift. Start holding right to widen your drift angle a little bit, and then just before coming into contact with the off-road, start holding a hard left, and once you get onto the off-road, use your mushroom. You don't want to use your mushroom too early, because if you do, the off-road will act like a little ramp, and you'll run into these bones on the outside of the turn. Not only that, but it makes it more likely that your mushroom will run out before you finish up with a shortcut, which is bad for obvious reasons. The last thing to mention here is that you really want to try and learn the timing of your mushroom, and in particular you want to learn how long the mushroom lasts, because in order to get the most out of the shortcut, you're going to want to wait until just before the mushroom runs out, and then neutral hop to clear the rest of the off-road. And with that, we are officially done with the lap. Hey guys, Basic here, coming at you with a little bit of post-production content. What happened was, when I started making this tutorial, my PB was a 153.890. Over the last few days, I've lowered this time by more than a second, and that's largely due to figuring out a more efficient way to take the last shortcut, so I wanted to quickly share that with you. Basically, after coming out of the sharp left turn after the glider section, you want to start a left drift and go into the off-road a lot sooner than I originally mentioned in the tutorial. What's going to happen when you hit the off-road in this way is that it's going to act like a little ramp and give you a small bit of air time. This will actually allow you to keep your drift through the off-road for just a tiny bit. If you use your mushroom as soon as you quote unquote land, and then start soft drifting as soon as you get to the gap in between the two sets of bones, you'll actually be able to clear a lot more of the off-road than the strategy that I used in my tutorial, which was to not really go into the off-road at all until just about when you get to the second dry bones. The thing is, in order to do this properly, you absolutely must soft drift because otherwise you won't be able to build up a super mini turbo when coming out of the gap. All right, back to our regularly scheduled tryharding. Lap 2 plays pretty similarly to lap 1 with a few notable differences. First up, on the second right hand turn of the lap, we want to start the right drift and then hug the turn as tightly as possible until just after the bend, at which point we hold left on the joystick until we build up the mini turbo. The next difference is that we're still missing a coin, so when we go off the first ramp, we're actually going to want to grab the second coin from the left. Incidentally, this is also the line that we want to take on lap 3. The last difference is actually sort of in our favor, because if you already have all 10 coins, then you can approach that awful split path turn a little bit more to the outside, which will make it a lot easier to not get flung off to the side for laps 2 and 3. So before we check out the full run, let's quickly recap the coin lines. Our first two coins are going to be dropped by the ship at the start of the lap. The next coin comes from the first ramp. The next five coins come from the inner portion of the split path and then from the start of the bridge. 
Our ninth coin is gonna come about halfway down the bridge, and then our last coin is gonna come from the first ramp on lap two. All right, let's check out how all these strats are put together in a full run. This is a pretty difficult course, and the strats that I use in my PB might look a little bit intimidating at first glance, but man, it's nothing compared to the world record strategies. Like we mentioned at the start, the world record uses a max mini turbo build, and my god do they take full advantage of that. I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of the strategies the world record uses because they basically boil down to build up mini turbos until your hands fall off. However, there are a few strategies that I do want to talk about. The first occurs at the very start of the lap, where they do a no item shortcut or NISC over the first patch of off-road. You can actually do a similar strategy with the Waluigi build, and it does save a lot of time, but it's super precise, and messing it up will actually end up costing you a lot of time, which is why I don't go for it. The next major difference is the ramp section. Rather than trick off the ramp and build up a super mini turbo, the world record actually hops just before they get to the ramp so they can actually land on top of the ramp. This lets them do some mid-air mini turbo strategies, which allows them to build up an ultra mini turbo at the split path section instead of a super mini turbo. Next up, when coming to the glider, they basically go straight down towards the ground and then do motion glider strategies. I'm pretty sure you can do something similar with the Waluigi build as well, but the last Waluigi world record was set before motion glider strategies were discovered, so I'm not really sure what a good setup would be for something like that. And that is everything you need to know about Bone Dry Dunes on 150cc. A really difficult course that actually ends up being a lot of fun once you've started figuring out the strategies. I first seriously time trialed this course a little over a year ago, and my old PB was around a 158. I hadn't really messed with the course much since then until putting this video together, and I managed to lower my time to the mid 153s, so that just goes to show you how much practice can actually help. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.